In this video, we are looking at the back of a Philips branded DVD player that is about 12, maybe 13 or 14 years old. And I want to discuss some of the connections that are on the back of this DVD player. And here are the connection points. We have audio, some video, some more video, and some audio. Now one connection that you're going to notice I will not discuss is HDMI. That's because 12, 13, 14 years ago HDMI really wasn't out and predominant like it is today. So let's discuss left to right this white and red audio jack. These are analog. In other words, the DVD when it's playing in the DVD player is going to output analog audio through these two jacks. So when you're watching a movie, if you only have one of these jacks connected to your television, let's say the red right speaker jack, you're only going to hear noise out of the right speaker. And subsequently, if you only connect the left, you're only going to hear it out of the left. So you have to have both the white and the red audio connected. Now, in order to see video, you have to have a video connection as well. So we're going to take a look at this yellow one. It's called composite video. It's one of the oldest formats of getting video to display from a DVD player to a television. And it's a very low definition, single channel, hence one jack, method of transmitting the video to the television. About in 1987, S-Video came out, and this is the connector right here. It generally has four pins. If you happen to take a look at your computer, you might see what's called a seven-pin DIN connector on your computer. But on this DVD player, it's four pins. Now, the benefit of S-Video over the older style composite video is S-Video transmits the video signal to the television over two channels. In other words, more information makes it to the television and the pictures a little bit better. However, you shouldn't expect video qualities more than 500, 550 lines, somewhere in that general area. Now, to the right here, we're looking at a red jack and a blue jack and a green jack. These jacks are called component video, red, blue, green. Component video is quite a bit newer than S-Video and a lot newer than composite video. Now, composite video, as you'll recall, had one channel. S-Video has two, so you can take a guess how many component has. It's got three. Again, more information is able to transmit from the DVD player to the television and a component video connection will give you high definition uh, video pictures as long as you're playing it on a high definition flat screen uh, LCD TV or an LED TV or a plasma TV and of course as long as the DVD you're watching is high definition as well. However, not to confuse this DVD player, it is not a high definition DVD player. I'm trying to illustrate that these outputs would give a high definition picture if everything matched the video, the TV, etc. So regardless, the best form of video connection on this particular DVD, and in many cases even DVD players today, are the red, blue, and green component connections. Now, if you only connect the video connection of red, blue, and green to your television, you will not hear any audio. You have three options. You can go back to the analog audio, the left and the right, the red and the white, or you can go ahead and upgrade to digital, which I recommend because the sound quality out of digital audio is far superior to analog audio. If you heard the same sound played on digital as opposed to this old style analog, you'd notice the difference, just like you notice the difference between standard definition television and high def TV. So, connect your video and then choose one of these connection options. 
this is a digital coaxial cable and this is a digital toss link cable. I'm a bit more of a fan of this. This cable is uh, readily available in most retailers. You do not have to connect both. You only need to connect one or the other in order to enjoy the audio signal. Now, one caveat, one cautionary tune. If you happen to be making these connections to a whole home stereo system, generally the only connections that will work is analog. But if you're just connecting it to a television and it has these connections on the back of the TV, go ahead and use red, blue, green video and then digital optical or a coaxial audio cable.